Hello everybody, welcome back to Questions and Answers, Episode 2. Uh, it's a little different format um, for those of you that have been following my channel from the get-go. Uh, so to cut the fat out, what this video serves is a way to collect all of the videos from the previous Q&A to this one. Any questions you guys and dolls out there ask, I go through uh, my comments feed on YouTube and I try to find them and answer them. Uh, I will applaud some of you guys out there and some of you ladies. Uh, you guys are actually going ahead and answering people's questions, which are awesome. Uh, there is one that I know is going to come up here as we go uh, that I wanted to read the question and the answer somebody gave because I think some other people might have that. It's more of a technical question with Manga Studio, uh, but it, it's, it's definitely something, and I'll talk why I think it's important, um, but we'll get to that. And again, if you guys had any comments or questions or needed help with anything, and if I can do so, I will leave a question in the comment bar below. And like I said, uh, next, these are supposed to be once a month, I think I said in the previous one, uh, but it's been about a month and a half. So the more questions you guys ask, the faster these can come out. So let's just jump right into it. So the first, we're going to go all the way back to uh, the first questions and answers video. And the first question is by... And I apologize for all butchering of name up front. Names up front. Uh, so the first question, question is by Kevin Phillips 1. And uh, he said, <laughs> and it's good that uh, this is the first question we ask. Man, how much coffee did you have while recording this? You're speaking so fast at times, it's hard to understand what you're saying. But the video itself is great. Well, thanks for <laughs> enjoying the video. I will try to speak a little slower. I find when I start talking about stuff that I really like, I get jazzed, obviously, you guys can hopefully hear it in my voice, and then I start really talking real fast like this, and I'm trying to get all the ideas out there and, and cram things, but uh, sometimes, and the other beautiful part, at least what I like anyway, and maybe this is just an ego thing, I don't know, but the faster I talk, the more quickly I can get ideas pounded into my head, so things I can share, maybe little things that I've come across or stumbled upon or things like that, but uh, I'll try to slow down a little bit so you guys can understand what I'm saying. Uh, this isn't the first time I've had that. Uh, I don't know if it's a complaint, but it's, it's, a, it's a warranted comment. I understand it. So thanks, Kevin. And the next question uh, for the same video is from uh, good friend Quincy Batiste. Batiste? Batiste 1? I'm always going to get your name wrong. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, first off, welcome back. I have a question. I'm working in Manga Studio 5EX, and it seems, or sorry, and he seems to be noticing a lagging issue when drawing. If I keep the DPI down to, let's say, about 72 to 300 DPI while drawing with vectors, I'm able to up-res the page to 600 DPI or higher if I wanted to print it f later. Make sense? God, I hope. All right, so if I'm trying to understand what you're saying here, let me just quickly go back over it. You're noticing a lagging issue when you're drawing. Um, so I think what you're trying to do to solve that, if I'm reading your question right, is you're starting small, drawing it in vector, and then blowing it up at 600 DPI so that you can send it off to print and stuff. I assume the reason you're doing this is because at 600 DPI, your computer's laggy. All right, so that's the basis I'm going off this. Uh, outside of, and I'm not a big tech guy here, so from what I hear, the more RAM you can shove into your computer, the better. Uh, the processor, I, I guess, would be the next thing underneath that's most important. Could be wrong. Please let me know in the comments uh, for all you really savvy computer people out there. What's what's most important for uh, an illustrator or an artist's uh, computer to have? Now, saying all that, I do myself have an older computer. Uh, I was talking to my friend Will about if he was noted like what resolution he draws at and if you guys have noticed way back since manga studio 4 i was drawing i believe it was 600 dpi back then as well uh, i'm actually not that confident saying that i will just assume it was 600 uh, the beautiful thing that manga studio 4 had over 5 it still has over 5 is that it is such a lightweight program that I don't think I ever experienced lag maybe here and there but it not even noticeable not even remotely noticeable 5 uh, it's it's again I always make the comparison it's a lot more like photoshop uh and actually now that I'm saying that this is something that uh, I had thought about because it had popped up 
uh, and brought my attention up. I don't know if any of you guys have really noticed. Maybe I'm, I'm looking at it weird. But in Manga Studio 4, when you drew, it was, uh, I believe, a raster image, meaning that there was no gray around your lines. It was just black and white. And in Manga Studio 5, it's adding a gray, you know, I think it's aliasing. I always get them mixed up. And I'm assu like I could be wrong again, but I'm more than sure that is more resource heavy. There's more pixels, more information to deal with. Whereas with Mega Studio 4, again, it was all like just that is what it is, you know? Um, unless I think you were doing painting and stuff. So to answer your question, uh, unfortunately, I don't, I've, I don't really ever work with vectors. The only time I ever worked with vector was when I was in high school and somebody needed a logo done. I, I understand why people use vector, but at the same time, I don't bother with it. Uh, maybe I, I'm just inexperienced. I haven't even delved into that stuff. Uh, so the only solution I guess I could give you here uh, is 300 DPI should be more than enough for print. Uh, whenever you give, and this is just my workflow that I've experienced anyway, anytime I give a colorist a 600 DPI image for them to color, most often than not, they resize it to 300 DPI anyway. Uh, I believe the big publishers, they still do 300. They might do 400. I'm a, again, not sure. 600 DPI is overkill. People say that all the time. Uh, one other thing I will point out there real quick, though, is the reason... Okay, now I know why I went up to 600 DPI Manga Studio 4, because at 300 DPI, the, the jaggies were happening, which is kind of going back into, I think, your question here. But if I went to 600 DPI, the lines got smooth. Uh, so I, I really don't know what I could tell you. Um, it might be time for a new computer. That's probably a little expensive. Maybe there's a solution you could find somewhere else. I apologize. I can't really help you out. Uh, if it's just black and white art, uh, I honestly still stand by Manga Studio 4. Uh, it actually, to me, has a lot more features that Manga Studio 5 currently doesn't even have. One of the biggest gripes is speed lines, focus lines, whatever you want to call them. Uh, manga lines, I hear some people call them. That stuff, Manga Studio 4 has in spades. Again, just look around. I apologize I couldn't give you a more of an answer. I, I really hope you don't need to buy a new computer because that's, depending on your cash flow, right? <laughs> that might be a thing. Uh, so, next video we're uh, going over was uh, just a few questions from Will Robson and I's Happy Sketch Time number five. And if you guys don't know Will Robson, and if you guys haven't seen Happy Sketch Time, it's... Uh, monthly-ish video where he and I tag team on Google Hangouts and we just kind of answer questions and answers kind of like my live stream um, but we're both just working on whatever we're working on that day so I highly recommend you check it out I'm having a blast doing it Will's having a great time it sounds like everybody's really digging it uh, go check that stuff out and um, what is Will's YouTube channel I, I believe it's Robson Inc I believe R-O-B-S-O-N-I-N-K Check out his channel Tons of great content If you like my channel Go check that stuff out A lot of it on there Is how to draw comics Digitally You know There's always information Out there for people Definitely check it out uh, So Ben Jones th uh, you know, No just Ben Jones Is asking a Stupid question How do you get your screen Gray in Manga Studio The white is killing me on mine Now this is the one That was already answered What, what Ben's asking Is uh, oh, Thanks for the question Ben I mean, it might sound pretty obvious, but whenever you guys are staring at a screen, it's usually on a white background. Manga Studio defaults at a white background. You can actually change that background color to anything you want. Once I found this out, I, I forget who would mention this, but I think it may have been digital artists that are doing concept art all day in Photoshop. They start to tone it down to a gray. Don't go too gray because it starts affecting your colors and stuff. But just making it so you're not blasting white in your face all day we're talking about art here, guys. If you're working at a, on a Cintiq, uh, even that, too, it's just like, boom, just light in your face. If you can bring it down to a gray, your eye strain will actually go down. It'll keep your productivity high. Um, yes, everything always looks brighter with high vibrancy and blast and bright light out of it. Save that for when you're, like, just looking at art. But when you're creating it, uh, you know, as much as little light as you can possibly have blasting out of your monitors, the, the better for your eyes. Um, so... Who answered it? SC part answered. Uh, go to File, Preferences, Interface. And on the right, Color Theme of Color Combination. Dark Color. So I'll say that one more time so you guys can hopefully pause the video, rewind it if you need to, just take a look at it. File, Preferences, Interface. 
And then on the right, color theme of color combination, put it to dark color. And um, I believe there's also like a little slider, uh, so you can actually change some settings there. So thanks for uh, replying to that. Uh, Nazra asks, is it possible in the near future, Jonathan and Will, that you guys will open the doors and invite other guests to the Happy Sketch Time? Will and I have talked about this before. I'm more than sure we have no problem with it. The show, honestly, is just, we're working anyway. Just hit record. I, I, one thing I personally would like to stay away from, unless I don't know where the show is going, I'll be honest. But if it starts to turn into something that's we're getting like popular or famous artists on there, then maybe we'll go this route. But I, I'm not trying to do this show to just ask, like have a guest artist on just to ask them questions. Um, I believe those resources are out there. Uh, I don't want to invest the time into doing that. That's not like a nose up in the air kind of way. Like I don't want to talk to famous, popular, successful artists. I totally do. I watch all those YouTube uh, videos all the time as much as I can, when I can. I love finding new stuff out. Don't ever want to stop. You've got to keep learning. You've got to keep, keep pushing forward. All that awesome stuff. But I, I don't like the interview process. I don't like sitting down asking uh, some questions for stuff. So unfortunately, if that's what you're looking for, uh, I'm just speaking for myself. Will might have a different opinion. I, I just don't have the time and resources to devote to do something like that. However, if, we're gonna, if we can have somebody on the show uh, that can stream their screen, stream their screen, or do a webcam or whatever they got to do, uh, if it's just their face talking, you know, and they will just want to do that, hey, I'm more than down with that. Uh, as low production as possible, <laughs> and uh, I guess I guess we can do that. I will tackle this real quick because some people um, have this question. There's two here for the happy sketch time. One, if you want to ask a question in the Q&A section, I believe you have to have a Google Plus account. I'm not a big fan of that stuff, but if you use it, sweet. And go right to the Google Hangouts page, and you can ask it right there. Uh, the YouTube comments, they do show up after, but they do not show up uh, in the stream, so we can't read those questions. The second one is some people have some, uh, they don't like seeing the screen bounce around back and forth, and what happens is as somebody's talking, that screen will be shown. So if I'm talking, right, like right now, you would be seeing whatever's drawing on my on my uh, canvas right now. And then uh, in, in the case of the show, if Will was talking, whatever he's working on would be on there as well. Uh, some people don't like it bouncing back and forth. Again, whatever's as easy for us to do, and that's just the default thing, unless somebody needs to show something, that we can click it on their screen specifically. So I, I apologize that this isn't uh, a huge production value thing right now. Who knows down the road it might be. Uh, but thanks, you guys, for actually sticking around and watching it, and hope you guys are enjoying what, you get, what we're putting out anyway so far. Uh, so the next video was from the pre-recorded live stream from June 19th. And Nathan Lewis asks, what do you suggest? Uh, okay, so what he's asking is, where would I suggest would be a great website to post your finished work? Blogs, how uh, do you purchase a domain or a website? Uh, first things first, I don't necessarily think you need a website right away. You do need one eventually, okay? Now, there's tons of free resources out there. WordPress, Blogspot. Uh, I think a lot of people now are using Tumblr. Lots of free stuff you can do. Post your, your artwork on there. Uh, and take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt because my site still doesn't have my portfolio up and it's been up for a long time. Uh, I just need to schedule the time in to get it up there. However, that's the one main thing that your website will be able to give you, right? However you host it. Is keep, I, and I've heard people talk about this. So whenever a client um, asks to see your portfolio, you can send them to just this portfolio site. So if it's on your website, you click portfolio, bang, it's there. Click that link, that, that sub link or whatever that says um, uh, Joey Awesome's Art Comics in Wonderland Awesome Ice Cream Powder Sauce dot com slash portfolio. Copy that link and send it to the people that want it. They can click and browse your blog after. Uh, I'm a huge fan of blogs. Uh, in any place where you can post your art, where people can just scroll down. Uh, I've done it. I know you guys have done it. The scroll wheel is awesome and, and scary at the same time because a lot of time goes by. But the more you scroll, the more art you see. That's good. That shows people that you like to draw, right? And if you're lucky, not only does it show them that you like to draw, but if they're scrolling down, they should notice that the art's getting worse. Now, hopefully it's getting worse slower, but the idea is because your newest posts are at the top, or always at the top, they're usually your best work, 
right? You're not going to nail every single thing you post all the time, but it should. You should notice that it starts good and kind of deteriorates over time, right? Start with a you know like a nice taste in your mouth, and then the candy's going to go away. Um, so yeah, definitely get a website uh, or get a free thing. That's for sure. But to start right now, um, to recommend some forums to go to. Man, uh, I don't even really hit up much forums anymore. I mean, back in the day I used to, I don't really know. I mean, forums are still around, uh, but nowadays it's just, it's for me anyway, it's easier just to mass post on social media. I find social media is like the new forums, but uh, forums of old. But the forums that are still out there, they're very specific. Um, so there are definitely websites you can go to to look for work. Uh, and you might be able to post things in these forums to, and get work, but most of these forums you're going to post in and get critiques, right? Your your other artists are looking at your work. It's not clients, okay? So some off the top of my head, if you're looking for comic book stuff uh, that you post out there just to get feedback, uh, penciljack.com and digitalwebbing.com. Those are my two favorite ones. Uh, DeviantArt is huge. They've got so many subforms, it's ridiculous. You'll actually post stuff on there, and I don't even know how it gets seen. There's just so much. Like, DeviantArt's huge. If you can spend, like, maybe a day or two just noodling around there and trying to see how it flows, DeviantArt's huge. Because um, it's kind of like a forum social media thing mix, which is pretty important. Uh, conceptart.org, if you're going into illustration and concept art, and there's even some for comic books. Thank God that they finally, not 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 that I'm attacking them or anything, but people start to embrace comics as actual art. Uh, the more people do that, the better. Uh, what other forums that I, I'm trying to think? Those are the main ones that are popping out. So conceptart.org, penciljack.com, and digitalwebbing.com. Check them out. I would most definitely have a Facebook account, even if it's just for your art. You don't, you're against Facebook. I, I'm with you, uh, but you got to fight the battle where it's at. Um, don't use any of your information if that's what you're worried about. Just make a, a fan page uh, and then start following some groups. But be careful. Follow the groups that are openly willing to have people just post art. They're not. The main thing you got to get out of your head, and I hope you're not trying to do, is just find places that you can just spam your work and and get work. That's the worst way you could possibly do it. The, the best way you can do it, I find anyway, is just post your work to get critiques and you'd be surprised how many artists out there know people that might need work. Uh, lately, anyway, I've had to turn down work and then send that work to somebody else that I know uh, that is probably looking for work or that I feel is like this person could definitely not only use work, but they can do it and they would do an awesome job. Thank you for coming to me, but so-and-so, they, they could do it too. And they just see if they're interested. That's it's like a networking thing, okay? So that's where the social stuff. Twitter with hashtags. Unfortunately, unfortunately or unfortunately, it depends on how young you are. The younger you are, I feel like this probably isn't much of an issue. But the older you are, it's more of a, a little bit of a a, neck, a pain in the neck where it's you got to be able to have your finger in a bunch of pies. I don't really understand that expression, but it, whatever. You got to know how to make a website ish. You need to know social media, marketing, networking, uh, all these things. And we haven't even talked about knowing how to draw yet, right? So check that stuff out. Social media is huge. Go into that. Pump that stuff out there. Use your exploiting of yourself on your Facebook stuff and your blog. Okay, that's where you can start pimping it. And uh, every now and then, I guess, sneak in an artwork somewhere where you m maybe wouldn't. Because you never know. I mean, it is kind of greasy to just be doing that everywhere. But if you do it once in a while, I mean, it's not that, like, there's people doing that kind of stuff. So uh, it was a little long-winded answer. Hopefully that, that helped you out, Nathan. Thanks for the question. Uh, Austin Draws asks, um, now I don't know if this is correct, but can't you, sorry, but can't you suggest, like, a little bit of your comic to a publisher, like Dark Horse, and they'll accept the idea and publish it. Now, what he's talking about, I believe at the time we were going over some, one of my personal projects, and I, I was just going over, I'm not sure where this project's going, what I'm going to do with it. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking too far down the line. I haven't even drawn anything yet, right? Like, the comic's not, the comic's an idea. The comic is in, when I say it's an idea, that might mean there's sketches and drawing. Full production of a comic, to me, is when you sit down and you're like, okay, let's start moving this train forward. You've got uh, maybe a draft of the story. You've got, you've got character designs, right? Maybe now you push it. It's kind of like, all right, 
we're committing to do it. Uh, anybody that knows me, anybody that's followed my stuff, I take no shame in it. I'm not proud of it, but I jump from idea to idea to idea to idea, and it's hard to stick with it. I get ideas popping in my head all the time that are always fresh and shiny, and, and actually I'm juiced to do it. I want to do that, but there are ideas, and I'm slowly realizing that I'm more of an idea guy <laughs> than I am an actual um, – what would be the a producer of work, I suppose? So that's something that I want to improve on. Uh, so that's why I'm being disciplined as best I can to uh, the, the the project that I'm doing right now that you guys have seen. More stuff's going to be coming out. I have videos recorded, just haven't uploaded them yet for Spectacular Z. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, we'll actually, I think there's a question in one of the videos coming up. But yes. You can definitely go to a publisher's, give them a sample, and at least maybe they might get excited. I'm not sure exactly how that world goes. I haven't had the fortune of trying to get my work seen by people. Usually when I'm hired for work, that's it. I'm just producing artwork to get people's attention, and then whoever paid me, uh, it's, it's theirs. I draw for them. Now they have a project that they can hopefully uh, get them some recognition or see the way I look at comic books at least where it's been so far for me especially when working with clients is it's it's not about me it's not about I need people to see my name on something I need it to go oh wow that's a Jonathan Rector cover oh did you read uh, the standard for example we'll talk about that uh, that's a six issue uh, I don't want to say yeah it's a miniseries uh, written by John Lees and co-drawn by again William, William Robson, I'll call him, Gentleman William, uh, who helped us out on the last two issues. And uh, maybe when I had started, it was about, oh, cool, I can finally have like this one issue, you know, like the six issue miniseries that's mine. But it turned very quickly into, uh, I just started to understand that my view on comics anyway is, is very concept art driven. Um, proper concept artists, and again, my opinion, Feel free to attack with pitchforks and fire. Uh, my opinion, especially, I hear most concept artists talk about this, and now that I do that professionally, I get it. It is not about me. <laughs> okay? It is not about the artist. It is not about the writer. It is not about the colorist, the anchor, the letterer. None of it. It's not even about the editor. Okay? It's about the, the product. Because that's what you're selling. That's what you're pitching. And unfortunately, in this... This this gritty world, right? Where, as you know, I keep saying it because I love it. Trailer Park Boys is an awesome show. Watch it, guys. The world is a very greasy, greasy place, okay? <laughs> and unfortunately, I can't just go, hey, read my comic. And it's awesome. And it's you'll have a great time and it's fun. And then when you're done, come talk to me. Those days are gone. I remember doing that in high school, maybe a little bit before, like going to the comic store with my buddy. And this is early 90s. No, not early 90s. Maybe late 90s-ish. 90s-ish. And uh, I remember I got Spawn and uh, Hulk and I believe Spider-Man. Maybe an, Oh, the Avengers. It was the Avengers. I apologize. And my buddy got Captain America. He was all about the proud, the heroes, right? Like <laughs> that stuff. And he wasn't actually allowed to have Spawn in his house. But when we went back to his house, his parents were gone. The first book he read was Spawn. And I would read Captain America, and then boom, I need to read Spawn, because it was such a different book. Not quite sure where I'm going. With, oh, no, that's where I was going, sorry. Is back then it would have been like, oh, man, I can't. I want to actually write into these guys so that I can have my name in the back, and I can start creating a dialogue, right? Like, that's the youthful thing. And, and I don't want to lose that. I mean, there's a charm when you're a child to uh, creative energy and endeavors and stuff, and... As we grow up, grow up, I, I strongly believe, and, and your parents play a huge role, or your grandparents or whoever uh, raised you, play a huge role in most kids when they grow up, right, they're very creative. We're, we like to make things. We like to make messes. We like to break things. Might like to put it back together again. Might like to get, draw something, and then show it to somebody, and they give you a good response, and that makes you feel good, and you want to keep doing that stuff, right? Like, yeah, this feels great. But there comes a time, usually... And I'm just speaking in broad terms here, where somebody tells you, you know, it's time to grow up, as if creating things is a bad thing. And I'm not going to get, obviously, 
If you're an artist, you're watching this, you probably agree with me that that's the wrong way to go about it, right? As a parent, you, or even if you continue to draw right now, um, you're like, you know, maybe your parents weren't like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's any art thing you want to do, but they, they didn't really bust your balls about it. They're kind of like, yeah, you go, go draw, do your thing. Right. Like even if you got that, that's better than just come on, let, let's go. It's, it's time to, you know, we got to gr- come on. You got to get a serious job or you guys are, you know, you guys know what I'm saying with that. And it's, it's a horrible shame. It's a horrible shame that that happens. Uh, however, as you grow up, it's still, you still, at least I did, uh, for a very long time, was the main thing I was getting into art was not only that I, that I like it, but I started to get responses from people that were like, they liked it too, and then I was, I don't, it's not a bad thing, do what you gotta do, but I was getting into it just to um, give people the good feels so that they would give me the good feels, right? And it wasn't even about storytelling, it wasn't even about composition or, or good art, it was just about the feeling. It's if you want to associate it with like I suppose a drug or or coffee or something sugar it's you change your state right and that's what it was then as I grew up it started to become okay you know okay I'm getting that enough and I'm kind of moving on that I I still want uh, appreciation and I want to be known for uh, you know letting people or giving people sorry good feelings and I want people to look at my art and look at the books I'm making and have a good time. Uh, If they hate it, at least they read it (laughs) or they looked at it and they took the time to let me know that they didn't like it, right? Um, But after a while, it just starts getting into, uh, okay, now you got to get serious about your art. You got to start focusing on, if I'm a comic book storyteller, it's about story and it took me a long time to come to that conclusion. Uh, It is solely about story. Some I even have manga that I'm looking at right now, and I've talked about it to death. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Check your library out. It's called Gone, G-O-N, and it's about a baby dinosaur, somehow from the prehistoric era, lived all the way to today, and he goes on adventures with animals, okay? I guess it's an all-ages book. I don't know. Uh, There's no people in it, and there's not a single word of text at all. And there's short stories. In each manga, there's like three or four. Gone in the chipmunks. Gone in the whales. Gone in the... It's some of the best comic reading that I have ever done. Okay? I put it up there and... Bear with me here. I'm going to... Sin City changed a lot of how I looked at comics. Okay? Sin City... And I looked at it late. I didn't look at it when it came out. Gone, similar. It's not the, It's not in the same realm. But it's. it showed me what awesome, awesome art with awesome storytelling can do without words. It's like watching a silent film, right? There's magic there. There's there's things happening. And it just started showing me, oh, okay, I'm, I'm kind of understanding what I think, anyway, comics are to me. Then as I grew up, it started. I started going to animation in college. And I became quickly aware a few years before that, because concept art, that I talked about before that, conceptart.org, I stumbled upon that website when I bought my first... Uh, Wacom Graphire, I think it was. It's kind of like a bamboo before those ones were even made. And it changed. I was like, this is cool. I, I just enjoyed it. I had a blast with that stuff. Digital art. It's so f- I can paint and not make a mess. Cool. So the more I was doing it, the more I started not researching. It was kind of researching, but I didn't know it at the time. I was... I was knees deep, guys. I was in concept art looking at... I wanted to be all of a sudden like the guy designing characters for video games and things like that. It started to dawn on me then that it's never about the artist. The artist helps get the idea out there, the project out there. Um, This is a very long-winded way of just saying, again, just my point of view, and I I will just touch upon when you do your own creator own stuff, but for the standard... It's not about Jonathan Rector. It's not about um, Kel Natal, the letterer. It's not about Mike Gagnon, the colorist. It's not about John Lee's, the writer. It's not about Stephen Forbes, the editor. It's not about Will Robson, the artist. It's not. It's about the standard. It's about the book, right? Granted, John's paying for it, the writer. He paid for it, right? He's the guy. I'm... My job on the whole book, and I look at this for every project I do, the World's in Peril project that I'm posting for you guys, uh, that you guys will see more coming up, that's all like the role-playing stuff. I'm thankful and grateful that I was asked to help 
bring my, my vision and my artwork to the book so that the people that hired me, and I'm just using this in gross, you know, I'm just trying to keep it open here, is that they were looking around, somehow stumbled upon my stuff and said, that's the guy. That's the guy I would like, whether money was involved or maybe I was cheaper than somebody else I wanted, don't know. But ultimately they picked me. Picked me for the standard. Picked me for every single project I've done. They like what I do. Whether it's great, doesn't matter. Whether it's shit, doesn't matter. That person wanted to put money on my money on my plate basically to buy food for myself, right? All the all that stuff. Somebody wanted me to help them get people interested in their project. That's what I'm trying to like just beat into your heads because this is what if you can what I'm trying to <laughs> I I this is how I got I go guys, I apologize, but what I'm just trying to say in a very inflated way is that the sooner you start thinking that you're just part of a machine, a cog in a machine, you'll be okay. A lot of the weight goes off your shoulders. You're not carrying the book. Just because you're the artist, you're not the superstar. There's Jim Lees out there. There's Todd McFarlane's. There's Joe Matarera's. There's all these guys out there that I buy just because of their name. That does exist, right? Most of us, but you, I think you need to remember, and again, this is just me coming from the concept art background, that the vast majority of people that buy comics they look at the art for sure, but they come back for the comic. And what is the comic to them? It could be a bunch of things, right? But as long as you, you remember that you're just a part of the team, you're part of that machine, uh, whatever your book project you're working on is called, that's the machine that you're part of. And there's joy in that. You just need to do your part to move the machine forward, okay? Don't worry, again, what I'm trying to get here is that if you sit down and you're like, all right, I'm the guy, I'm the artist, all right, so, you know, uh, the, there's going to be people in, in, the, in the machine that aren't pulling all their weight, that's just the way it goes. Eventually, you're going to get into bigger projects, the better you get, right? You're going to start getting other pieces of the puzzle surrounding yourself on projects where they're busting their ass as well, just like you, to get better work, right? To get seen by more people. Ultimately, we wanted, I do anyway, I want people to be happy. I want people to have a have a feeling when they look at my stuff. I don't want people to just look at it and go, throw away. That sucks. I want somebody to like it, love it, or hate it. I don't want people to look at my stuff and just go, whatever. It's going to happen. But the majority of people I would like to enjoy my stuff, and I'm assuming most of you guys agree with me on that, um... I can't imagine many of you out there are just doing this just to be like, I want people to have posters of just my, like, I don't know. Maybe maybe that exists. Maybe that's more of an illustrator mindset. I'm not sure. I just can't get, I can't get over it. The first, I'll tell you this, and then I'll wrap up the creator own thing and then I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> but the very first convention that I went to was in Chicago, uh, Wizard World Chicago, I believe it was, in 2006, maybe, 2004? And it was with, uh, oh, what was his first name? Irwin, something Irwin. Uh, I forget his name, it'll come back to me. And he had, I believe it's still going, Ape Entertainment. And uh, I was actually, I didn't get to meet him at the time, but my good, good old school friend, Cannon White, who's doing a book right now called Uber. Check it out, the artwork's amazing. He... And I, we were, I don't know, I, we, we just got along a lot of our, we started working on a lot of projects together. And I remember I went to that convention, that was my first one. And granted, and I'm just going to put this out there, it, it's a brilliant marketing thing and I highly recommend people do it over and over again. Um, they would have one person at their booth have a stack of free sketch cards, okay? And all you had to do was bring it to booth, blah, 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 and say, hi, could I have a free sketch on this card? And what it did, obviously, you guys can see right through it, is that it gets people, hopefully, to come here to get a free thing. Everybody usually, well, not everybody, but most people go to get something free. Right? They don't know how good it's going to be. Just assume it's crap. Whatever. But that gets you there so you can talk to them. Like, While they're waiting for the sketch, I can sell you books. Maybe. Right? It's all good. It's business. That's the way it goes. I sat down, and there was a lineup. And it wasn't a lineup for just, it wasn't a lineup for John. It wasn't. It was a lineup to get, I just want my free sketch, man. I don't care how cool it looks. Just give me a free sketch. I want something free. And I sat down. I started drawing a head. 
And I noticed, it was taking me about five minutes, and I forget what character I was drawing, Superman, Batman, one, whatever they wanted. And I'm drawing it, and the lineup. And I remember I just looked, just really quickly, because you got to, you know, I'm under pressure here. I didn't know. I wasn't expecting this. And I looked down, and I saw people towards the middle or the end of the line. They were, like, resting on one leg. And the show had just opened. They're not tired. They were bored. That's when I knew, okay, I need to be fast. I, need, I, can't, I can't just, these aren't commissions. Boom. And I'm not talking, I was hammering out. I, like to me anyway at the time, I wasn't just drawing garbage. They were, I was boom guys. I was knocking this stuff out, and I went. I think the whole show, uh, maybe I had like two things of water. That's it. I didn't even eat. Uh, when I was done, I was starving. I went and I ate. I didn't even walk around the show. I was just just knocking this stuff out. And I don't say this to impress anybody. That's not what I'm saying. It's I'm just trying to say what's got me to this mindset of I'm there as. And I mean, this might start to sound a little bit like, oh, artists or, you know, what each person on the team is just like, you're just a workhorse, man. Just you draw the pretty pictures. So do that. Right. There's truth to that. But the people that are in this business, if you're uh, an artist, if you're a writer working with people, if you're an artist working with writers, there's respect. There's class. There's I. They have an idea of what it takes to do this stuff. Right. They're not the average consumer. That's where you're going to get your love. Except for like the diehard fans that really like your stuff. And there's two cats that came into uh, the booth in New York when we were selling uh, The Standard. When I met John Lees for the first time and all the cats at Comics Tribe. Two guys, Eric and I, I forget, maybe his brother or his friend, they came up. They came and they apparently John told me they were there last year, bought the books. They came the next year, bought the new issue or issues. <laughs> I was so slow, I have no idea how many issues I did. Probably one, maybe two. And uh, they came back, that, and they said the first booth they went through was to come there because they loved the book. And then uh, John was like, oh, there's the artist there. You guys should have seen these kids' eyes light up. And that's the magic. That's To me, that's like when you can see the fans that appreciate what you're doing. That's when it's about me, right? That's where you can see, wow, there's people that like the book or whatever you're doing so much that they want to see you. That's when they want to get your signature, right? That's what they want to do. That's when that's all about. But when the work's getting done, don't worry about all that. Just worry about doing your part. And do it the best you can under the timeline you can, okay? Um, now, saying all that, real quick, when it comes to personal projects, it is about you, right? So sponge it. Enjoy it. Love it. Everybody loves you, <laughs> right? Everybody hates your work. Everybody likes your work. Everybody doesn't care about your work. doesn't matter. It's for you. When you do a personal project, it's about something else. Besides just maybe you'll get money one day. At least it should be. It's it's therapy. I find it to be therapeutic to sit down, turn some music on, and just draw spectacular Z characters, God Slayer characters, Jessup King, Squirrel God. All these things you guys have never even seen. Just stuff. It feels good. The bad part is I'm not getting paid for it, right? Because if you start doing this for a long enough time, you might start getting my view on it, which is a little, I don't want to say it's jaded, but it's not sugar and rainbows, right? And again, I haven't worked with the big boys or anything like that, so obviously there's different opinions, but the more you do this and the more you work on these giant teams, the whole process becomes, at least I find, it's it's clockwork. Okay, let's do this. A, a writer wants me to work. Okay, cool. Do this. What's the deadline? All right, let's do our best to hit it. Let's try all right, it's cool, let's go, all right, and we're going, and we're drawing, and there's some bumps, and there's, you know, this, you're getting paid, all right. comics becomes a process that's scripted, you know, like, I could tell you guys right now, if somebody offered me a comic job, I have my automated reply that I go, okay, cool, blah, 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 this and that, they give me theirs, we go back and forth, yeah, we like each other, shake hands, okay, pay me, okay, cool, now we got money, now that means it's a job, Cool. All right. I love my job. Let's do it. And you just do it, right? With the personal projects, you don't do any of that. You don't got, at least off the beginning. Again, I could be wrong. Just opinion. But in the beginning, it's just like, I have nothing. I got to come up with stuff, right? And it's all just see to your pants and it's fun. It's it's that part. And this is honestly something, and I'm going to get off. This is the last point I'll make. And I'm just going to cut myself off. Is when you're a kid, just around the conversation out, at the beginning, when you start drawing, it's just for fun. You want the you want people to be like, yeah, I like that thing. You know, it's cool. Draw more. And you're drawing. There's an innocence to it. And as we grow up, the older you get, that kid, he or she starts getting 
smothered, right? Like nobody cares about that voice. And the, the saddest, most depressing part about it is you stop listening to that guy or that girl. That little boy, that little girl that's inside you that had fun playing with action figures. That And now it's weird because you're a grown-up. Whatever that means, right? Like, that magic's gone. Why? Why? Because people say it's not right. Let's be honest. Let's cut the fat. If I, anyway, the way I look at it, if you're an artist, if you're doing comics, illustration, concept art, yeah, you can look, you can look like a human being. You can look like an adult, right? But that doesn't mean you have to always be that, right? You can be you, you know, and I, I'm beating a dead horse of this thing, but just <laughs> add some soil and some water to that little child that's inside you that that got you interested most likely in doing what you're doing today be grateful that you're doing be grateful you're and i mean now we're getting into some guru stuff but just be grateful you're alive today to do some comic book work right that people care and if they don't yet they will all you got to do is just have fun man just do it but if you're working for clients and stuff the way I look at it, yeah, it's fun. There's still a lot of awesome stuff that's come from it. I, like, I'm grateful for all the things, all the... I haven't made millions or, you know, whatever, but the money that I have made has given me a lot of really awesome things to help me keep the dream and my fun of art alive. You know, and I and I, there's nothing wrong with any of that. But myself, anyway, now it's time to move into personal stuff. And I believe the question, <laughs> I'm just going to quickly look over it just to make sure I even answer that. That's probably like a 30-minute answer. Jeez. Yes, if you do go to a uh, publisher, I'm more than assuming if you showed them some art, maybe a pitch, or sorry, a, some some sort of breakdown. I'm not sure. Again, I haven't gone to the editors. I don't know exactly what they want. Um, the best way is trial and error and or uh, role modeling is a big thing I'm a fan of. So find independent people that tried to pitch their work to places and got it. So a great example that most people know, Robert Kirkman, uh, Walking Dead, Invincible. He's done other stuff. I don't know. Try to research. Find out what he did and then just do that. See what happens. You might not get a job. Your book might not get picked up. Okay. But you'll, you're going to learn things along that way that are along your way there that will help you anyway. Find out ways to get it to these people. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, if you guys fast forwarded, I apologize. Uh, Cody Bang is asking, uh, the thing I like about making a personal comic is that there's no deadline, but there, but there not being a deadline also means there is a lack of motivation. Since there isn't a deadline, there's really nothing forcing you to get it done. Yep, it's a catch-22. It's very dangerous. Uh... <sighs> There, outside of making a deadline, I don't know what you would do. I'm currently stuck in a situation where it's, uh, I'm just kind of, I'm busy, but I'm casually just thinking about the idea of a comic when it comes out. Usually when it comes time to like 30 minutes a day or whatever to do this stuff, I just draw. And that's, that's great, but there's no story that or writing that needs to get done, but it's not happening because I know there's character design to be done. Uh, so I'm just kind of like doing that. But I think once you get like, some th something established like if you can even get your story down and this is what I'm focusing on is getting it down to a paragraph what's what's the story about maybe the first arc get your paragraph down write it down somewhere post it on your wall so you can always see it that way as you continually draw you maybe you're not writing yet but as you draw you already have ideas in your head of maybe the, at least the main character right or at least figure that character out or the villain or some stuff to draw right and then it'll start to build and then I think you're going to get to a point where you'll have I don't want to say you're going to build like a bunch of paper with work on it and stuff but you'll have enough to go okay this is something now and then you can start to look at that paragraph you had and adjust it or add things to it to turn it to fatten it up to turn it into a story right and then actually I'm going to show a video on this soon uh, there's a a lady, I believe her name is Mary... Ah, oh man, I forget her last name. Uh, if you check out writingexcuses.com, I know most of you guys aren't writers that watch this stuff, but you might be in a personal project, so you might be looking at new ways of writing. Uh, I've actually just started implementing this in, uh, in book writing uh, that I'm trying to do with a buddy of mine, uh, where what she does is she breaks down a method of writing as if she was writing... Uh, sorry, as if she was drawing a painting. I know it sounds weird, but there's the under, the thumbnail sketch, then the outlining layer, then you start building up values and stuff. That's the way she, she's an artist as well as a writer, so that's how she figured out a way to do it. And it's actually very, I'm digging it. Or you start with a paragraph and then you beef it up. So maybe that can help you out there. So thanks for the question, Cody. 
And uh, very last question of this whole thing, and I'll, I'll let you guys go. And thank you guys so much for sticking by or sticking around, hopefully, towards the end, and you guys dig it so far. And this is for the Spectacular Red Pencils, Inks, and Color episode that I posted. I just wanted to, before I get to the question, say one thing. I noticed some people were saying, like, oh, it looks like Beautiful Joe and stuff. Thank you. Um, I wasn't trying to, I'll say, rip that off. Um, great game. I'm just getting inspiration from, I think, where that game got their inspiration, which to me, anyway, seems like Power Rangers. Uh, so, Spectacular Z, the project that I'm moving forward with, is my, I don't want to say love letter, but all the things I loved growing up, like the big, the two big shows that I loved, which were Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And that's kind of, well, it's, it's very heavily leaning on those as to the genre, anyway, of the story. So, if you like those kind of things, stick around, you might like that. As for, again, the beautiful Joe thing, uh, thanks. I uh, appreciate it. I don't know if I'm sure you guys are <laughs> probably talking in a different, uh, you meant it in a different way than praise. But um, it's a quick question. One of them is asking, or one of them, 2011? 2111? No, it's 2011. I can't read. Oh, my gosh. Why you color in PS? So why do I color in Photoshop? The reason I color in Photoshop is my day job is I'm a concept artist and illustrator, designer for a video game company. We use everything, or I use everything in Photoshop there just because of the, sp it's Photoshop. Everybody uses it. It's fast. Uh, I'm comfortable in it. And yeah, Manga Studio, I'm not comfortable coloring it yet. I can do quick color fills if I'm just doing flats, maybe a shadow, uh, but usually shadows, when you get into complicated shadows and highlights, they're not just one color. They can be if you're just doing like very, very simple coloring. Um, but I like to use gradients and airbrush techniques and, and things like that. You guys have seen me color. You guys saw me color in that video. Uh, so that's why I use Photoshop. Uh, there's some other things. Again, it's just more, I'm just comfortable in it. That's all it really is. I, I don't need to beat that horse any more than I need to. Uh, but yeah, I've seen people color some amazing things. Awesome stuff in Manga Studio. And uh, to be honest with you, if I get some time anytime soon, <laughs> Uh, I'll most likely spend some time doing that. I am coloring in the background where you guys don't see uh, for, for sketches for Spectacular Z and other characters and stuff, just for fills and playing around with stuff. But uh, that's usually how I find time to learn software and that. But, yep, so I just use Photoshop because of the speed. So thank you guys so much for sticking around in this long-winded episode. I uh, appreciate all the questions, all the support. Thank you guys so much, all the likes, shares, reshares, retweets, uh, you know, Google plus one, plusies, whatever they're called. Uh, really appreciate all the support. And again, if you guys wanted to ask any kind of question, just put it in the comment bar below this one. I will check it back in about a month's time, maybe a little bit longer like this one was. And uh, what I'll do is I just go through all the comments in that video as well as all the questions up to that video and answer them. Uh, that way, in case I'm missing any, as I post videos, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> and I can try to um, attack them then. So, until the next video, guys, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.